Logic gate. Logic gate. Gate of logic. Logic made of gate? Hmm. So one day I was watching Steve Mould, and I came across a video of his where he made water-based logic gates, and then used them to create a water-based binary adder. And I thought that was super cool, because I've never seen anyone implement logic without electronics, let alone doing something so primitive like water and gravity. In that video, he also mentioned a binary adder made of dominoes done by Matt Parker of Stand Up Maths. Also a great video. And this all got me thinking, I wonder if I can create logic like this in Minecraft without using any redstone. But then, what would I use? I mean, I, I could try to use water, like Steve, but then I thought of creating logic gates with literal gates, and I mean, that was just too juicy for me to ignore. But if you do want to see me try it with water, then let me know down in the comments, and subscribe so you don't miss it. But anyways, here we are, and we're going to be making some logic out of fence gates, and we're going to be making a binary adder after that. So, where do we start? Well, let's look at exactly what logic gates we need in order to build an adder in the first place. BAM! So there's the diagram for a 4-bit adder right next to Steve Mould's design. Now unfortunately, I'm not going to explain exactly how an adder works in this video, so I've linked some good explanations in the description if you need it. But I will tell you what these symbols mean. So this arrow with the curved line in the back is called an XOR gate, which outputs true if the number of true inputs going into it is odd. So for two inputs, it's just one or the other, but not both, and also not neither. And this one over here that's shaped like a capital D is an AND gate, which outputs true only when all of its inputs are true. Pretty self-explanatory. And actually, those are the only two logic gates in this particular diagram, but I want to replace these XOR gates with OR gates since that's the more traditional design for a full adder. This is the shape for an OR gate, which is basically just the XOR gate but without the extra curved line, and it outputs true when any of its inputs are true. So now that we have our list of three gates, let's get building. So, what to do with you? So if we want to make logic gates out of fence gates, then we need to find a way to pass signal through it. Now, luckily for us, the fence gate is really good at blocking and letting through entities. It's kind of what it's designed to do. So an entity can land on top of it, but it can also be passed through when you open it. So of course, the first thing that I thought of was a minecart. We can move them on tracks and then kind of drop them on top of these fence gates and also on top of pressure plates and through trip wires. But it's one block tall and I don't really want to use a ton of rails in this system, so I had to think of other things. The next thing I thought of was arrows, because I kind of thought that it'd be cool to just watch arrows propagate through logic. But then we kind of have this problem of precision, especially if it's being shot sideways and when you open the gate, it kind of maintains a small amount of momentum. And also if you want to go ahead and shoot them from the top very precisely, it's pretty difficult to get it right on target. And even then, it doesn't fall perfectly straight, although that was pretty good. So finally, I landed on the armor stand. Well, it's also made of wood, so it kind of matches the aesthetic. And it's also two blocks tall, which hopefully makes it easier to work with. So I think I'm gonna go with armor stands for our way of transferring signal. So a couple ground rules that I decided to set for myself is that I didn't wanna use any components that had anything to do with redstone. That means no redstone dust, no redstone repeaters, torches, comparators, or even anything that has redstone in the crafting recipe, like droppers, dispensers, observers, note blocks, or pistons, or anything like that. So basically the way that these fence gates are going to be activated is either by pressure plate, like this, or by tripwire hooks, like that. And actually right here we kind of have our first logic gate by accident. This would be a perfect AND gate. So if only one of these armor stands falls, if this one on the left falls onto the pressure plate, then it doesn't go through. And same with this one, if it, this is the only one that falls and it falls on top of the fence gate, then it doesn't fall through. But only when they both fall, then this one actually makes it all the way through. So there we go with the AND gate. I mean, that was pretty easy. Now for the XOR gate, which I think will be the hard one. So for the XOR gate, I'm thinking something like this, where these two blocks here are our two inputs, 
and if either one of them, only one of them come through like this, then it will fall through like that. Same with the other side. But if both armor stands come through, then we need to be able to block both of them. I didn't do that in time. <laughs> I think a good way to do that would be to have one of the armor stands block the other one. So this one will block this one's path, and then this one will block this one's path. That way, if only one comes through, then its path is still open, but this other path is closed, which doesn't really matter. And uh, same with this one, when this one comes in and only this one comes in, then this side is blocked, but he's free to go through. But if both of them come at the same time, then they're blocking each other, and then we'll get a state like this. Now the problem is these two gates need to be powered by default like this so that they actually go through and then when one of them arrives then it needs to be depowered. And since we can't use torches that's that's kind of tough. Maybe we can do something like this where we have two armor stands here and they are pre-powering these tripwire hooks that are pre-powering these by default and then say when this one arrives right then it activates this fence gate here drops that one down to the void and then blocks the other one's path same with this one here so the real question is how do i detect whether one has arrived and then send that signal here or actually crisscross the signals without redstone hmm okay so i have a crazy idea what if we kind of drop them off center of the block kind of in between two blocks so that it falls next to this fence, which has a pressure plate on top of that. This pressure plate will activate this fence gate, which will release this minecart, and this minecart will drift onto that pressure plate over here, which will open uh, this fence gate over here. So, I mean, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's embarrassing. Hey, oh my gosh. Okay, that should be better. So let's see. It'll go down and hopefully, ah, okay, never mind. All right, third time's the charm, hopefully. I just kind of made sure that the sideways momentum gets canceled out, and there we go. Nice, that's good, yeah, and that would have uh, had that fall through, and then that would shut. I think, yeah, that's a good proof of concept. Now, let's see if I can replicate that on the other side. All right, there we go. I moved these up by one block just to make it a little bit easier to build. And so let's just test it out one at a time. So only one comes through. We should see that it, there we go. Drops that, blocks that in time and then falls through, which is good. All right, let's try the other side. Comes through. It should block the other one in time. There we go. And it falls through itself. Nice. And now if they both come in at roughly the same time, then they should in theory block each other. Okay. Nice. I think I want to make this maybe like one block longer just to be safe, but that's pretty good. I, Wow. An XOR gate made with water, minecart rails, fence gates, fences, pressure plates, trip wires. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but there it is. No redstone and powered only by fence gates and other stuff too. And look, I know what some of you are thinking. You need to reset it manually so it's not exactly reusable, but hey, neither were the dominoes, so I think it's fine. Please forgive me. Okay, so we have the AND gate here and the XOR gate here. And now the thing that we need next is the OR gate. And, uh, yep, there it is. Look, I'm serious, watch. So if one comes through, we have an output. If both come through, then we still have an output. And if none come through, we have no output. So now we actually technically have all the pieces we need to make the adder. So let's start putting that all together. Before we do that though, we do need to address one little elephant in the room. You see these junctions on the diagram where the signal splits into two areas? Well, that'll be a problem with my current designs here because I designed each of these gates to have two inputs and only one output, which kind of makes it good for cleanliness. But when one armor stand needs to then split into two armor stands, we don't exactly have an answer for that, 
but I do have a really janky solution. Basically what I'm thinking is at the same time that an armor stand drops, if there's a junction, then it's going to essentially duplicate itself by deploying another armor stand that's waiting at that junction, kind of like this. And yes, I do realize that this makes it not reusable again, and it needs to be reset every single time manually, but hey, you know, we're, we're having a bit of fun here. It's fine. So let's go ahead and get started combining all of these pieces into a full 4-bit adder. Whew, that took so much longer than I expected, and it was way harder than I thought too, especially because I had to worry about timing these things. It's, it's not quite as simple as just connecting these logic gates together according to the diagram, because these XOR gates I designed to be timing sensitive, so the two armor stands have to kind of fall in here at roughly the same time in order for it to be triggered properly. So I had to make sure that no matter where it was coming from, whether it was from the output of the previous XOR gate or it was coming from a carry, that all things would converge at the next XOR gate at about the same time. And so that's why you see all of these zigzagged waterfalls over here and, you know, little bits of soul sand over here and soul sand there and there's a little bit of soul sand here and there and there as well. But that was all just for timing and I extensively tested, I'm sure you could see at least some of that during the time lapse. Each of these sections I tested for timings individually, at least as thoroughly as I could, but I still haven't added two numbers together fully. So we do have these outputs here, so that's the carry, that's the 8, that's the 4, that's the 2, and that's the 1. I also went ahead and took the liberty of color coding each of these logic gates according to their type. So the XOR gate I went ahead and made green, the AND gate I made orange, and the OR gates down here I made baby blue. Now you can kind of see that the OR gates kind of have a funky shape to them. This one kind of comes around like this and comes this way and this one has this sort of shape. And this one down here is just a simple L shape. Well that's just because the OR gates in this example are just converging lines of water, so I can really make them any shape that I want. Oh, and the eagle-eyed among you may have already seen this giant cluster of command blocks up here. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything cheaty. I'm just using this to reset the contraption because there's a lot of minecarts and a lot of armor stands that I need to put in each of these XOR gates and each of these junctions here. And although I clearly marked them, it would take a long time for me to reset it and I may forget some spots like down here there's a couple of branches and there's up here a branch and there's a couple branches here so all this was just to make that process a little bit easier actually a lot a bit easier and a lot more reliable as well and now it's about time to add two numbers together for the very first time give me two random numbers between 1 and 15 5. Okay. Well, I asked for 2. I'll just ask for another one. So 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. So uh, I'm going to populate this left-hand side. Starting here, this one's going to be a 0, this one's going to be a 1, this one's going to be a 0, and this one's going to be a 1. 
And you know what? It just dawned on me that I never actually explained how to use this thing. So basically these two blocks right here, these two inputs are the two digits in the ones place. These two are the two digits in the twos place. These two digits are the two digits in the fours place. And then these two are the ones in the eighth place. So the first number that you're adding together is comprised of this bit, this bit, this bit, and that bit in that order. And then the second number is of course the other one. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. Basically all the first blocks and then all the second blocks. So the first one with five is zero, one, zero, one. And let's go ahead and ask for the second one. Give me a number between one and 15. Okay, 14. So 14 is uh, 1110, right? So that's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0. So now we have 0101 0, 1 plus 1110. 1, 1, so the way that I'm going to get these all to drop at the same time is I'm just going to go ahead and use world edit and delete these blocks. Now, of course, there are ways of doing this without commands. Uh, namely, I would think of doing it with just a line of signs that are all hinged on one sign. So you just kind of like punch out one sign and then all the rest fall at the same time. Or we can break the rule of no redstone and use trapdoors instead. But you know what? I'm just gonna use commands because why not? The rest of it, it's all powered by not redstone. So let's see. So without further ado, let's Go for it. Okay, so they've dropped. These two are going through. That one has gone down. We have this XOR being blocked. All three of these go. The ones place has already fallen all the way down. We have this, yeah, we have this XOR gate coming through. This one is gonna fall down through as well. These two are going to arrive if I timed it right at roughly the same time into this XOR gate, which they do, and they get adequately blocked, fantastic, and we have our carry bit. So let's check our math here. So five plus 14 is 19, right? So 19 is gonna be 16 plus two plus one. So this right here is our carry bit. We have 16 here, and we have nothing in the eights bit, and we have nothing in the fours, and then we have a two, and then we have a one. So actually, in that particular example, it ended up working. So that is absolutely fantastic. All right, so now let's try a bit of a harder example, maybe something like 11 plus five. So the reason that I say that is because it has all kinds of different cascading carries that happen throughout the edition, and it ends up with 16. So basically, we should have only the carry bit and nothing else. So all of these XOR gates going down this line should all fire. So let's see what happens. So 11 plus 5, 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1. And 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. All right, let's see what happens. And it falls. We should see, yep, that and over there, back there got triggered. This XOR works perfectly. This XOR falls through. And we should see that, let's see, this XOR, there we go. We should see that come through like so, and these should get blocked. Oh, okay, that didn't get blocked. Uh, we'll look into that a little bit later. Uh, but you see here, okay, we do have this one being blocked properly, that one being blocked properly, and the 16 has gone through. So how come this one fell through? Ah, okay, there is our culprit. So this armor sand fell through before this minecart had a chance to come through and get onto this pressure plate. And because it couldn't get to this pressure plate because it was being blocked here, this one was closed properly, but this one was never closed properly. So, hmm, I wonder what I could do about that. So in essence, what's happening is this armor stand falls through and then this minecart gets triggered to go through. And yeah, it doesn't have enough momentum to push through, or perhaps it just can't. It also can't push this onto the pressure plate, which is a bit unfortunate. I wonder if there's a way to give this thing a little more momentum. Now it is on a slope and we can't use powered rails. So, hmm. 
I wonder if I can use a minecart chest instead. Now these things tend to have a little bit more momentum, actually quite a bit more momentum than the regular minecart. So it should maybe be able to push through this armor stand. Let's see if that's true. Oh, no problem at all. It just powers right through it. That's perfect. So basically what we have to do is replace the minecart on the right hand side with a minecart chest. That's easy enough. So I'll just fly up here and edit every other one to be a minecart chest, right? So it's chest minecart like that. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and edit all the rest of these. Okay, so with that simple modification, we should be able to complete that addition. So that's 11 plus 5. 1, 0, 1, 1, plus 0, 1, 0, 1. All right, second time's the charm, maybe? All right, and they're off. So these ones should fall through, no problem. This one should stop itself. We do have the and triggered down there. We should see that these two armor stands will come into here at roughly the same time-ish. That one does beat it to it, but the minecart chest does allow this to work properly. And the rest of it did work before, so it should work again. So here we go, we have this one triggering perfectly, and we have that one triggering perfectly, and we have our carry bit coming out, and now, we have our perfect 16, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 11 plus 5 equals 16. That is amazing. And I also did a bunch more just for fun, because this is really satisfying to watch. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And subscribe for more redstone shenanigans like this. But before I close out, I want to give out two special shoutouts. A few days ago, I made a community post with the XOR gate just to see if anyone would guess what it is. And two people got very, very close. One of which was the crazy sheep, who left a very detailed description of basically exactly what it does, and the only thing that he was actually missing was the word XOR gate. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare that a success for you crazy sheep. Thank you so much and congratulations. And the second one goes out to Jacopo Valapiano, I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly, um, who just said, or maybe a logic gate. Which yes, it is a logic gate, so congratulations Jacopo, you also got it right. And on that note, I'll end it here. Bye-bye.